commit to your happy, sober future right now. Go to the website, stopdrinkingexpert.com forward slash webinar and book your slot on the next free quit drinking coaching program. Hey, how you doing? This is Craig Beck from stopdrinkingexpert.com. Uh, welcome into a quick video uh, because I just wanted to record something to reflect on something that's been going around in my crazy mind for a couple of days. And that is whether... Uh, our addiction to alcohol and other things is a reflection of spiritual disconnect within us. Um, and I'll tell you why uh, I'm kind of talking about this subject that I wouldn't normally touch upon, because as you know, if you know me at all, is that one of the things that I talk about, um, my problem being with AA, is that the spiritual aspect of it didn't appeal to me. And I always had a bit of a problem with the concept of AA and that you giving your problem to a higher power and asking God to fix you, basically. I always thought that was problematic for atheists and agnostics who, you know, finally pluck up the courage to go to a meeting. And then they're told that they're, you know, they're not strong enough to deal with this on their own and they have to give it to the magical person in the clouds that they don't believe in. I've always thought that from day one, that process is destroyed for them. And they probably go home kind of think, well, well, what next? Because what is next after you do AA? Where where else do you go? I mean, rehab? Well, that's okay if you've got $50,000 to spare. But if AA doesn't work, where do you go? And so I've always had a bit of a problem with there being a religious spiritual aspect uh, to the, the big book and the 12 steps. Uh, and... I've always said with my course at stopdrinkingexpert.com is you don't need religion. You don't need faith. You don't need anything like that. This is about logic. This is about common sense. This is about reprogramming your brain so that you no longer see alcohol as a benefit. You see it for what it is. And that is attractively packaged poison. Anyway, by the way, just before I tell you this story, uh, I'm in London at the moment. I'm traveling. I've been, been to see my daughter. I'm heading back to Cyprus. Um, and I was just on the underground and they give out these free newspapers on the London underground. And uh, I just saw the craziest story uh, on the on page two of the Evening Standard, the London, London newspaper. And it was encouraging people to not do dry January this year <laughs> to try and help the pubs out. The pubs and the bars and the nightclubs have had a, such a tough time with COVID. Yes, I get that. Uh, but the newspaper here is suggesting that this year you don't stop drinking to help out the pubs. <laughs> uh, they wouldn't do that with any other drug, would they? Think about it. You know, if the tobacco industry had, had a, a problem with the harvest this year, you wouldn't see the newspapers going, eh, maybe smoke a little bit more this January. Or if you're planning to quit smoking, wait till February, eh? You wouldn't see it with any other drug. It's It's just the absolute nonsense of alcohol. Anyway, I just thought that was quite funny. Anyway, back to the point. A couple of days ago, I was reading a book uh, by Dr. Raymond Moody. Um, it's called Life After Life. And he made a statement in it that I found problematic. He said, all addiction is merely evidence of the lack of spiritual wisdom. And I thought about that, and my, my gut feeling was, no, that, that's, that's not right. This is not, let's not make addiction about religion or spirituality. But it's been playing on my mind, and I think he might have a point, but to a point, not as such a broad statement as he's making, because I think there are some addictions, um, like smoking, that have got nothing to do with your mental state. They've got nothing to do with escapism. Because, you know, smoking is, is purely and simply addicted to nicotine. You know, nicotine gets into your head, uh, starts ringing bells and making things go off. And then when you don't smoke, you, you need that to be replaced. And it's a kind of loop that you get into. But, you know, smoking doesn't change your mental state. It doesn't turn you into a bumbling fool. It doesn't zombify you. You're, you're quite, you know, a brain surgeon could nip out of the hospital, have a cigarette, go back into work and complete the process and the operation perfectly fine. So I don't think that statement applies 
to that sort of drug. But I think he might have a point when it comes to alcohol and bigger drugs. Because I think for the most part, and the most people that I meet who come to me saying they've got a problem with their drinking, we're all trying to escape reality in, in for some reason. I think most people get stuck into a loop of problem drinking because they're trying to escape something else. It's not that they want to drink this horrible tasting liquid or they want to feel like that or they want to spend all this money on this health destroying liquid. It's just that there's something worse in their life or there's something bigger missing that they don't want to think about because it's so painful and to so difficult that they're taking the path of least resistance and that is to take an anesthetic to make it go away. Of course, you know, when you zoom out, you can see how fruitless and you know pointless that that whole process is. But when you're you're in the loop, when you're trapped in the middle of this thing, you don't think like that. You just think, I want this to go away. And sometimes you don't even think it. You're not even conscious of it. You're drinking because you're miserable. Maybe you don't even know why, but there's something in your life or something not in your life that's making you miserable. And so I'm kind of changing my thinking a little bit. I think he might be right here. Because I can't really think of anyone I've met on this 10, 11 year journey of helping people to quit drinking. Of people who've come to me and described their behavior and why they're drinking and what they're trying to get away from. I've, I've never really met anyone that uh, seemed completely happy, that everything was perfect in their life, that they, but they just happened to be addicted. There's always a backstory with alcohol, there's always a bad relationship frustration at work, abuse, childhood abuse, low self-esteem, loneliness, depression, anxiety. There's always a backstory. And I think that's one of the reasons why people find this such a difficult drug to get off is because virtually all the approaches are centered on removing the drug from your life. You know, you go to your doctor, you go to your GP and you tell him that you're drinking a bottle of whiskey a day or a couple of bottles of wine a day. What's he going to say? He's going to suggest you stop drinking. He's probably not, unless he's a very good doctor, he's probably not going to go, what's the underlying cause? Let's see if we can find out why you're doing this. He's going to focus on the symptoms that present in front of him. And he's going to see that you are drinking too much. It's making you ill. It's destroying your life. Therefore, remove the drink. But it's not that simple, is it? Because if you remove the drink, you remove the coping mechanism. And up until now, and up until a certain extent, your coping mechanism has been pretty good. Alcohol has helped you. But of course, it, you know, the analogy I always make is that it's like using a loan shark to deal with your debt problem. Yeah, going to a loan shark gets rid of your debt to a certain extent for a brief period of time. But is it not true that the problem you get off the backside of that is infinitely bigger than the problem you started with? So I think you, if you're struggling with your drinking right now, um, I do think the first step on this journey is to ask yourself some serious questions and give yourself some honest answers. The questions need to be, what am I escaping from? What, what am I afraid of? What is missing? What is painful? What is causing me to drink anesthetic on a daily basis? And sometimes that, that sounds like an easy question to ask yourself, but sometimes it's so painful for us. We never want to think about it. We do everything to avoid that line of questioning, even if it's in our own head. And so we deliberately force ourselves never to think about it. And sometimes you have to admit to some things that are embarrassing and not socially acceptable or cool or whatever you know you you might have to say things to yourself I, I drink because i'm lonely i have no friends i don't have any genuine friends and i think that's really common you know especially for certain introverted people you can have lots and lots of acquaintances in your life but a lot of people i think they would struggle to fill up one hand with the genuine friends in their life but you know Society and social media and Facebook suggests that everyone we know has hundreds, if not thousands, of really great friends, and they're all having great fun together because we see it bombarding our lives uh, on an almost daily basis on social media streams. So I just wanted to share this with you uh, because I want your opinion, really. 
and I wanted to see what you think. Is addiction a symptom of spiritual lack of wisdom? And I think what Dr. Raymond Moody means by that is, if you understood your place in the universe, if you understood why we're here and what the point of life is and what you're supposed to be achieving, and you have um, an exit strategy in your head, and by that I mean you have an idea what happens to you when you die. That doesn't mean you have to in like it or you, you don't have to believe in God or you don't have to believe in the lack of a God. You just need to have something in your head that makes sense. When I die, I think this is going to happen. You need something, otherwise you're always going to be lost. You're always going to be lacking spiritual wisdom. So I think you need to find something that makes sense to you, whether that's religion or spirituality or Buddhism or whatever it is for you. But what he's saying is if, if you don't have that clarity, you don't have that certainty that you are here for a reason, you are valuable, you are important, you are significant, and you are on this journey. And when this life is over, then this is going to happen. If you don't have that, you're going to feel uncomfortable, you're going to feel miserable, and you're going to question what's the point of it all, and you're going to be at risk of addiction and that sort of thing. What do you think about that? Do you agree with that statement? Do you think that has merit? Or does that upset you and make you angry? Do you think he's oversimplifying it? I'd love to know what you think. Please comment below and tell me. Uh, I promise I'll look at them all. And uh, I'm very fascinated to find out what you think. So just wanted to pop in with that today and also say Happy New Year. And uh, we'll speak soon. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, I'll see you hopefully in the next episode. By the way, if you're new to the channel, click that like button and subscribe as well so you get an update on when I make a video next. Thanks a lot. Imagine if you woke up tomorrow morning no hangover, no guilt, no regret, just full of energy and vitality. That is the life that is waiting for you. And the best time to get started on this sober journey is right now. And trust me on this, I've been there and done it. I've tried everything. Every quirk, every gimmick, every rehab. I've tried AA, prescription medication, hypnosis, cold turkey, willpower, you name it, I tried it. And none of it worked. Until I worked out the secret, the mindset that you have to have if you want to kick alcohol into touch forever. Commit to your happy sober future right now. Go to the website, stopdrinkingexpert.com forward slash webinar and book your slot on the next free quit drinking coaching program. You'll even get a free copy of my best-selling book, Alcohol Lied to Me, as a gift just for watching the webinar. If you're serious about this, make today the day you do something about it.